the first night you watched Amanda play, what do you think? I had never really seen that much of uh, let me start again. <laughs> uh, the first night I saw Amanda play, yeah. I, I guess it was watching somebody who managed to capture all of the elements that I've been wanting to incorporate musically. And which are? Which were just like musical theater and punk and just not even that, not even genres, just a, an overall feeling, an exuberance, an attitude, a sort of conviction in the playing that I just found really inspiring and that I totally related to and could see myself complimenting more so than just in a standard conventional kind of band. Uh, it just seemed like the world was totally open within that music. A, for me to express what I wanted to do and to also fulfill my role as a drummer in this group and to try to take advantage of all the things I had been learning. And what, what did you miss then? Uh, was there one specific thing you missed uh, before while playing in other bands or didn't you know you were missing something? Uh, s s did I know I was missing something in other no, bands? Yeah, because you were saying, well, it was totally different from the bands I used to play in. Did you know oh, while playing in those bands what you were missing or didn't you even... Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you knew. You knew yeah, absolutely. That's, that's sort of what perpetuated the search and the continuous seeking for, for that sort of fitting context, I guess. Um, you know, I had made my way down from New Hampshire and playing in cover bands and rock bands and these kinds of things. And I started playing with this like hardcore crust punk just like speed, you know, kind of thing, and uh, and then got into this band playing bass for about a year and a half, and that was sort of like a weird Nick Cave, Gun Club, kind of PJ Harvey-ish kind of conglomeration kind of sounding band, and um, but I didn't want to be playing bass, but the thing I did learn in that band at least was, I think, how to play less and listen more, okay, yeah, yeah. which is something that I applied directly in working with Amanda when I sat down with her for this first few times. And she was just playing the music. The first part of the process was, what is this person really playing? How do I key into the dynamics and what the lyrics are and what's really being conveyed? So do you, do you talk to each other then about the lyrics? Do you know what she's singing? Do you have to know? Or well, at, at first, when we begin working on a song, it's the lyrical content in terms of like what all the you know ambiguous metaphors and you know clever wordplay and the, you know the storyline or who the characters are you know that it is like the true depth and detail at first are not really my my primary concern. It's again like how I listen to music in the first place, which is the lyrics and how they're delivered are much more music. I don't listen with a poetic sensibility, per se, and then sort of interpret the meaning of everything, contemplate this and that. It's more just like how melodically and rhythmically are the lyrics gelling with the with the rest of the music and that kind of thing, and because so, that gives me a, a foundation for what I'm going to play. But then after that, of course, learning the nuance of, of the lyrics only helps me because I get to sort of accentuate and embellish in certain places. So the more I know, the more I have to work with. But can you say in Retrospect that you were that you have let's uh, because you started as a met you you were a metalhead in the eighties I think <laughs> was oh, you still, still are still okay still still are. Okay. Uh, okay but can you tell uh, maybe uh, the the uh, how you developed that it was all making up to this yeah. style of music yeah no, absolutely uh, rock was definitely the first thing that spoke to me okay. because of the energy and was was, um, I think, passed down to me from my father. And my father was a drummer, got me started playing, and used to play me, you know, Hendrix records and Cream records, and 
uh, mountain and lots of classic rock and, and uh, music of musicians that he really respected and wanted to turn me on to. Um, and so I, very much from that 60s rock, had the, also the jazz and improv sort of sensibility incorporated. As I got older, he ex uh, sort of exposed me to jazz, brought me to see the Elvin Jones Jazz Machine, which was a huge turning point for me. Absolutely. Okay. Because it really showed me drumming and the, the sort of musical and primal energy that that art form could truly possess from a totally different angle. It wasn't just rock bands hammering it out. It was that same emotional impact and that same kind of power and force in a totally different medium, you know. It wasn't all about, like, throw your fist in the air and headbang. It was, you know, put the horn up to your mouth and just let it go. And how much can you express without using language, like, you know, verbal language like that. And, uh, and then as, and as sort of, I, that at least was the background that started me on those tracks. And as I got older, I sought out more underground punk stuff and also... How, how come, how come, how come? Oh, sorry, sorry, sure, sure. No, I was t I'm just trying to, uh, to see how, the, uh, how, you, how you grew or changed. So you had the, the It was the seeking out the more pure the forms okay. stuff. And then, and then you went to punk because you wanted more, the more pureness and the more... Sure. Okay. When, I mean, when I was six and seven years old, I thought John Bon Jovi was like a rock god. As I got older, I found, you know, heavier music, and so I was into Metallica and, you know, Anthrax and Slayer and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, and then, and then I got into, obviously, being a sort of a product of, of the, the grunge era and having all those bands kind of thrown at me at a really impressionable age. Um, that got me into Black Flag and Minor Threat and Circle Jerks and Crass and a lot of those bands. And so, and so this search was on for, like, well, how, what's... You know, what was a? I started delving back into history. But did you know what you were looking for? Or oh, absolutely! Did it, no, did no, I know? knew the exact elements of what I wanted to find, okay. and it was just a matter of the process of weeding out and how okay. to like search those tracks and who do well, who do I listen to now? I, I remember listening to Rollins' band and going, "Oh man, wouldn't it be cool to hear Henry Rollins like in a screaming ass punk band?" This was before I ever heard Black Flag, and so then I found that then. Henry Rollins was like, if you think my stuff with them was good, you should have heard the first four years record involved with Dez and like, you know, and so and it just kind of goes back and you talk more. And I think having also, like I said, appreciation for real players, real musicians, um, that led me sort of along the, the, the track of listening to seeking out a lot of jazz music. And when I went to uh, the Berkeley summer program after I graduated, I sort of wanted to go and check it out. I wanted to go and see what Boston was like. Uh, I went down for the, the five-week program there, and although I was totally turned off from the curriculum and the general attitude of the staff and student body, I, uh, <laughs> I found that they had a really great library, and so I would just sit for hours and just listen to all kinds of records. That's where I first really started listening to John Coltrane, and I was like, oh yeah, Alvin Jones used to listen, you know, and so all these things sort of like tied together for me, and... And at that particular time, I was ab absolutely looking for aggressive, really stark, raw music. And, so, and that's a long time when I got introduced to bands like The Swans and Ornette Coleman and listened to a lot of the culture and stuff and, you know, on and on and on. And, uh, and as, sort of as the years have gone on, I've actually... I've always been a total romantic at heart, too, and I started discovering some of the more ballad type records like Ella Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong or, you know, Nat King Cole or all these different kinds of records and, and Lester Young and a lot of these different types of players because there's such a, a rich emotional content to that music wrapped up in really tasteful musical playing. And that's what I want to emulate. That's what I sort of want to aspire to, you know. But can you say that you're looking forward to the pureness in the music? It yeah, doesn't matter absolutely. What. It doesn't matter what. Yeah, I think because you're saying, um, but the thing is, how do you, for yourself, how do you explain uh, the Dresden Dolls, the music you play, and the uh, metal part? Because now, if, you, if you're sitting here, yeah. you're wearing a tie, mm -hmm. uh, you have your hair this way. Um, how does it does it 
it's all inside. Yeah. This doesn't mean fuck all. Okay. It's just a fucking suit and a tie. But I can imagine people saying to you, "Well, how 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 did you come from metal into this?" Or don't don't people say that to you? No, okay. people do. No? My favorite part actually is after the shows and people coming up and going, "Wow, man, you clearly listen to metal, don't you? Or you must have been in a punk band, or yeah, yeah. God, man, you listen to a lot of jazz, huh?" It's funny because people pick up on yeah. certain aspects of all that, but. Part of the beauty for me of the Dresden Dolls, of the whole world of this band, is being to incorporate all that you truly are into the artwork. You know, I've always listened to things that have attracted me to music, and what I've sought out is what can I learn from these players? How can I grow? What's who is a teacher? Like I went through this huge Willie Nelson phase because I love listening to him play guitar. And he said, I listen to Django Reinhardt, so I went and bought Django Reinhardt records. And you listen to these guys and they speak through their instruments, which is a, a principle that my father really impressed on me when I was young. He's like, use the drums as a voice. Yeah, yeah, Think, yeah, yeah. you know, if you've got something to say, say it through your, your music. And, and so I've always sought those kinds of things out. How, if I wanted to play heavy, that's where, you know, if I'm listening to Pantera, I like I learned a lot of cool tricks for me to be able to express myself. How do I play more musically and atmospheric? I got that from Elvin, you know. So I've sought out those things and now I get to apply all of those, you know, diverse, bizarre elements into this band. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.